All right, girls, when we get started here, this is such a great turnout. I love the microphone, this is cool. Um, so today really is about a series that we're gonna do with you of bringing in tennis girls that graduated from here and sharing their success stories. And that doesn't necessarily just mean on the court because a lot of your success that you will have will be off the court as well. So I'm gonna introduce uh, Danielle Mills and kind of talk a little bit about her. So give her a round of applause. But when we talk about being a, a tennis girl here, you all have goals and you set these dreams and goals, but then it actually becomes a vision and it becomes real. And so Danielle was here from 2001 to 2012, many, many years, okay? So I was here when you were uh, just a young student and Danielle started her tennis here. Um, she started at age 11, right? Yeah. Court three, it's like yesterday, I can remember everything. I can remember working on her serve, what forehand, the drills, keeping hundreds of balls in play. So, and a lot of tears, a lot of down moments, but a lot of incredible moments that she never even thought she would reach and she did. So that's the whole point of today is to share a little bit of her story and, and hear from her. But outside the court, she was, inside the court, she was able to play at University of Miami and before she played at University of Miami, she played professional tennis, went to college, and then played professional tennis after college as well. So we always talk about you know, your goals of tennis and I wanna be a professional or I wanna be a college player, um, and you can do both and there's no timeline. So Danielle um, is the CEO and founder of Headstrong, which is a company that basically promotes LinkedIn and how to master LinkedIn. She's been on MSNBC. She has been a best-selling author. She's an entrepreneur. Um, so basically, I won't. I would say that she's a rock star in the business world as a female. So it's really great to have Danielle. So I'm gonna give the mic to Danielle. How are we doing, ladies? You guys doing good? Excited to be here. Um, I just want to give it back to Margie. It's such an honor to get to come and speak to all of you. It's such a full circle moment for me because I literally have sat in all of your shoes. Like she said, when I came to IMG, I was 10 years old initially and I came as a, as a short timer. How many people in this room initially came like short time first before coming full time? Raise your hands. A lot of you guys. Okay. So when I came initially, I'm originally from New York, and in the region that I lived in in New York, I was considered to be like one of the better players in that region. So I thought, okay, I'm going to IMG, I'm gonna be really good. And I got here, and immediately I was humbled. And I was humbled because I played a match against a, a girl, a lot of the coaches may remember her, her name was Mary Clayton, and I played against this, this girl who was hitting two hands on both sides, and she beat me 6-0, six, 6-0. Zero, six, zero. And that was like the first time that I ever got bageled. And I was like, oh, I'm not as good as I thought I was. Like, this is different. And I immediately knew this is the place I want to be. This is the place that I want to spend my time. So I say that to say, you know, no matter what level you are in this room, whether you are new to the sport, whether you've been playing for a while, whether you are, have aspirations to do a lot of big things, this is the right place to be. And there's so much that you're going to learn throughout your journey here. Um, we're going to kick it off with a little game. I'm going to get you guys involved really quick. We're going to play a game called Name That Tennis Player. So, by a show of hands, who knows, don't call it out, who knows who this gentleman here on the left is? I'm going to call on you in the front with the headphones. Novak Djokovic? Yeah, Novak Djokovic. Good job. And in this picture, I want to say he's like 10 years old. So, this is everybody when they're young. All right, who knows who the girl with the, um, you know, the orange bowl who's like holding the trophy here? Who knows who that is? Raise your hand, raise your hand. In the back with the visor, the white visor. Coco Golf. Coco Golf. that was her when she won orange bowl. 
And then this one's probably easy, but who knows who this smiley guy is right here um, in, the, in the blue hat? Alfred, exactly. All right, and what about the last picture? Who knows who these two individuals are? Does anybody have any idea? Any, any guesses? Okay, I'll go with you. Yeah, that's Serena on the on the left. Who's on the right? Does anybody have any idea who that may be? Way there in the back? Yeah. Me? Yeah, that's me. So that is me at 11 years old. The first time I had the opportunity to meet Serena, it was right here. I mean, the stadium wasn't here at that time, but it was literally right here, court one. And I just remember being in awe of her because at that time she had already won grand slams. She was already extremely successful. And she took the time to actually like take a picture of me. And me as an 11 year old, that was huge just to even be near her. So I say that to say, you guys see me today, you know, 32 now, grown, but I, I was this kid and I was here in your shoes and it's just like eye opening to be back here speaking with you guys. But um, I'm gonna tell you guys a story right now and I want you guys to envision Well, let me ask you a question before we even get into things. What time do you guys typically have to start practice here today? Is it always in the afternoon? Do you guys have a morning practice? How does that work? Afternoon. It's afternoon? Okay. It's school in the afternoon. School in the morning? Okay. So way back when I was here, we used to have morning practice. And there was a period of time when we were doing something called like physical fitness prior to tennis. So for about a week, we were doing this thing, and it was always on, I believe it was court eight, and all of the tennis program, not just the girls, but the guys, had to come at six o'clock in the morning, imagine, six o'clock in the morning, come to the court, warm up, do our exercises before we broke out into groups and go, and go to the courts. So I'm 12 years old, I'm staying in the dorms on the campus. When I was here, the dorms are actually a little bit behind where we are right now, you know, that's where they were. And, you know, I set my alarm and that's what the alarm used to look like back then before it was on your phone. And I would set my alarm and, you know, I went to bed thinking like, okay, I'm gonna wake up and go to practice. And I set my alarm for 5.35 because back then, when I was like 11 and 12, I don't know if people do that here now, but we used to have Razor scooters and we would like scooter to practice. And, you know, I was like, okay, well, the courts are not far away. I can just scooter to practice. I'll wake up at 5.35, I'll get there. So what happens is the alarm goes off and for the first time in my life, I hit snooze. I hit snooze on the alarm and I went back to sleep. And then when, I, when the alarm went off again, for some reason I was in such a deep sleep that I hit snooze again. And then the alarm went off another time and I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be at practice. I look at the alarm and it's 6.08, but practice is supposed to start at six o'clock. So I have this like epiphany moment in my head. I'm like, oh my gosh, do I, uh, do I still go? Do I